Hello there. Welcome to the latest podcast from Woodcare Specialist Sadlin. As you'll know, investing in a quality piece of wooden furniture, whether it's a dining table and chairs or a feature dresser for the bedroom, can cost hundreds if not thousands, especially if you're after something that's going to make a real statement. So why not save your money and invest time instead by renovating a piece of furniture? Whether it's something you've had at the back of the garage for years or you picked it up for a couple of pounds at the car boot sale, now more than ever before, second-hand goods have taken on a certain kudos and really allow you to express your individuality. Much in the same way as a vintage bag or scarf can make an outfit, second-hand furniture can add that special something to your decor that will make it stand out from the crowd without costing the earth. For just a few pounds and a bit of elbow grease, you can create a really exclusive piece that won't be seen in any of your friends' and family's homes, unlike the majority of the flat pack furniture that we've been opting for in recent years. Renovating a piece of furniture can also be a therapeutic process. What better way to forget about your cares than spending a few hours sanding and varnishing? And the best bit is, is you get a great piece of furniture at the end of it. As times are tough for us all at the moment too, with rising bills, fuel costs through the roof and a slowing housing market, the other major benefit is the cost saving. All you need are a few basics and a bit of hard work, as I'm going to demonstrate now. Right, let's get started. I inherited this old table and chairs from my grandma. They emerged from under a pile of old newspapers in her garage when we had a clear out. Having been sat in a cold, damp and dusty garage for quite a few years, they're in need of some TLC. But under the grime, there's a beautiful set of quality furniture that I think, once titivated, will be perfect for my kitchen. OK, so before I get going, here's a checklist of everything you'll need if you're doing a similar renovation. A cloth. A 500ml size bottle of methylated spirits from your local DIY superstore. Fine medium grade sandpaper, a good paintbrush, but don't just buy the cheapest which are more likely to leave a trail of bristles over whatever you're treating. Finally, you'll need to choose what to treat your furniture with. For furniture that's going to have more wear and tear, it's best to go for a varnish as it offers a higher level of protection. And for more occasional furniture, you can opt for a stain. Saddle in quick drying varnish and saddle in interior stain are both available in six wood shades, so you're sure to find something to complement your existing furniture. As my table and chairs are going into the kitchen and will be used on a daily basis, I'm using saddle in quick drying varnish. It's available in clear satin, gloss, and matte finishes, and I'm using a satin varnish in dark oak. My table and chairs are already varnished, so I need to start off by cleaning them down with the methylated spirits. This is so that the new coating adheres well. When you're doing this, remember to change the face of the cloth regularly, otherwise you're in danger of cross-contaminating. I actually find this part really therapeutic. OK, now that's sorted, I need to sand down the surfaces to provide a key for the overcoat. Use a fine medium grade sandpaper and be careful not to be too vigorous. If you reveal bare timber, then it can lead to a patchy finish. So best not to do this if you're stressed. Also, remember to brush away any dust once you've finished. Well, that's looking pretty good, so I can move on to applying the varnish, which is the most satisfying part of the process. Stir the product thoroughly before starting and then apply the varnish using big, full-flowing strokes. Load the brush carefully and remember always to go in the direction of the grain. If treating something like a table and chairs, I'd always start with the top and work down. That way, you avoid splashing anything you've already treated. You also need to make sure that once you've started in one area, you carry on and finish it in its entirety, rather than starting and stopping part way through. This is to avoid crossover marks, as the varnish does begin to dry quickly once applied. Once the first coat's been applied, then you can put your feet up and have a bit of a rest while it dries. But don't get too comfy. Saddle in quick drying varnish is touch dry in under an hour, and recoatable within two. Just enough time for a lovely cup of coffee and a biscuit, so why not pop the kettle on? Right, back 
to work. Sometimes the initial application will leave the surface a bit bubbly or uneven. This just means the grain has been raised. It's quite common and can easily be remedied by a light resanding, so no need to worry about it. Details of coverage rates will be on the can, so make sure you refer to them carefully. Too thin a coat will lead to lesser protection and increased maintenance in the future, so it's worth doing a good job in the first place. The varnish is touch dry within an hour, but do be careful with your furniture for a few days after you've finished. I won't be moving my table and chairs into the kitchen for at least 48 hours. The varnish I've used here is especially great as it has Teflon surface protector technology, which means extra protection against knocks and scuffs. That said, I'll also be using placemats to help protect the table from hot objects. Once you're happy that your piece of furniture is thoroughly dry, all you have to do is move it into position, sit back, admire and enjoy.